like more expensive dash cams, a good budget one should record incidents, theft or damage around a car and help drivers save on insurance premiums. So, to find out which is best, I brought three of them to Birmingham Wheels, a unique track dedicated to all manner of motor activities at the heart of the UK's second city. These chaps here are all experienced banger racers and stock car drivers. Just the expertise we need to put our dash cams to the test. The budget dash cams I'm evaluating today are the Motorola MDC300, which is the cheapest on test and comes with 1080p resolution. The next base, 222, is our mid price dash cam. It also comes with 1080p resolution. The Road Angel Halo Drive is our most expensive, but it's still available for less than £100. On to test number one, image quality. And for this round, I'll be doing the driving. Good image quality is essential in a dash cam, so it can capture any unfortunate events while you're out on the road. I've rigged all three of my budget dash cams to the windscreen of this big old barge from the 90s, a Vauxhall Omega 2-litre CD automatic, which once boasted 134 brake horsepower. Anyway, to compare picture quality, we've dotted some props around the track. A bespoke registration plate to test legibility at a normal following distance, differently coloured cones to represent car colours, and to evaluate the readability of signage and text, some gadget show posters. How well will each dash cam capture images of our props? First up, the cheapest on test, Motorola. Now, the Motorola has a 160-degree field of view. It shoots in 1080p at 30 frames a second, and you can increase the uh, recording time if you want to by going down to 720p. Reducing resolution to 720p on the Motorola enables it to record up to five hours' worth of footage at a time. Though even in 1080p, this dash cam is struggling to capture our Gadget One registration plate. That kind of resolution should allow you to zoom into an object with detail retained. But the quality here just isn't good enough. The words of our Gadget Show poster are looking a bit noisy too, and the auto colour balance has shifted to the orange side leaving our blue cone looking darker than it really is. So it's a lacklustre result from the Motorola. Next up is our mid-price next base. They claim it should never miss those all-important number plates and road sign details. But how will it fare in my test? The next base has a narrower field of view than the Motorola, just 140 degrees, but it has a six-layer lens. Now, it also records 1080p at 30 frames per second. It also records 720p, this time at 60 frames per second. It could be useful if you need to slow things down. Advice I should probably take when weaving through the slalom. The lens is multi-layered and it's proving well able to keep up, accurately capturing the colours of the cones. The wording on our Gadget poster is clearer too, but when we zoom in for an in-depth assessment of our Gadget One registration, it too has struggled. Will the most expensive dash cam on test from Road Angel be able to improve matters? Like the next base, it offers a 140-degree field of view. The Road Angel also offers a 1440p mode at 25 frames per second, so it's the highest resolution of the three cameras. Although it's the most expensive of the three dash cams, it's missing one rather key feature. It doesn't have a screen, so you can't see what you're recording, though that may make it slightly less distracting while you're driving, I guess. But it does come with an app for setup and monitoring. Anyway, I'm enjoying this bit of slalom activity. It's a shame one can't drive round racetracks forever. Putting my venerable Vauxhall into park and reviewing the footage, it's clear the colours of our cones are a lot truer to reality on the Road Angel. And although still noisy, it's managed to capture our plate more cleanly than the others. And the same for our poster. So, round one goes to the Road Angel Halo. For our next test, we want to see how reliable our budget dash cams are when you need them most. Time to utilise the expertise of our stock car drivers in test number two, crash detection. These are people for whom crashing is a way of life, so this should be an excellent test of the crash detection capabilities of our dash cams. 
Each of our budget dash cams claims to have G-Sensor technology that detects an accident, automatically saving the footage before and during the event. But to ensure we're testing them fairly, we're running them all at the same time in the Omega, while it battles with three other cars we've temporarily rescued from a friendly scrapyard. I'd be amazed if it hadn't detected that. Each dash cam is detecting these dramatic dings as they occur, though there are differences in the way they save and protect the footage for future evidence. When the Motorola and Next Base detect a sudden movement or impact, they automatically protect the footage in question by moving it into a separate folder. The Road Angel Halo, however, can't do this. While we weren't driving long enough today, the clips featuring the impact would have eventually been overwritten unless manually saved. And after the race, when I checked all three dash cams, the crash detection had indeed worked on the Motorola and Next Base. But because I had to search for the clip with the halo, it's not getting a point in our crash detection test. Cars well and truly spent, it's time for our final test, night vision. With 40% of crashes happening at night, I'm driving around the side roads of Birmingham, helpfully sprinkled with signs and graffiti, to see how our dash cams cope in the dark. And first up, once again, is the cheapest on test from Motorola. Now, the Motorola has a low-lux sensor, so they say it uh, should give viewable footage in low-light conditions without artificial lights. Ooh, this is a dark road, a good test. The Motorola reproduces the colours of the artwork well, and the road signs dotted around the back streets of Birmingham's east side are crisp and clear. Interesting to see how it copes with these uh, lovely festoon lights here in Birmingham. It copes well with the stark contrast between the bright white street lights and the black of the night sky, something that would also be helpful when driving on country roads facing oncoming traffic. Does the next base 222 fare as well after dark? Next Base say their camera has sensors that improve clarity, brightness and contrast in nighttime driving so that you can pick up extra details that could be useful in the event of an incident. The Next Base also has, by a small margin, the uh, largest aperture of the three, an f1.6 lens, so that could give us a little bit of extra brightness as well. And it seems that results in an even truer reproduction of the colours and signage on the dark roads. There also seems to be less flare as I passed under the radiant display of festoon lights. But there's still one more dash cam to go, our most expensive on test, the Road Angel Halo. It'll be interesting to see whether the higher resolution translates into poorer image quality in the dark or better. Well, when placed side by side, the budget Motorola is clearly lagging behind. But there's not much to choose between the next base and the Road Angel, giving them two points each after a day's testing versus the Motorola's one. Question is, with a superior video performance overall, has the Road Angel done enough to drive away with the win? Well, John? Well, um, tricky, really. I mean, the Road Angel did have the edge on video quality, but with the next space, it's much easier to find clips in the event of an incident. It puts them in that special folder. Also, I think most people would find the screen useful, and it's a bit cheaper. So, all things considered, my recommendation is the next space. Thank you, John.